Hey guys, so I finished my King of Ruin from Creature Caster and I thought I'd do a bit of a show and tell. I'm going to explain how I painted this guy and then I've got a quick picture gallery at the end of this video. If that's all you want to see, the link to that is in the description. First off, here's the miniature after I assembled it. Like I said in the previous video, the only seam line that really needs to be taken care of is around the torso, but I also did some filling around the face. You could probably get away with leaving that one alone because it kind of follows the folds of his fat, but I'm always worried about washes pooling in these gaps, so I filled it. One thing I noticed when I glued on the antlers in the final stages of assembly, by the way, is that about half of them wouldn't stick, so I ended up having to use putty. I was able to do that without making a mess, but, well, I figure it's good to know, so now you know. The first thing I did was airbrush the skin. I base painted the whole thing with burnt umber from Vallejo, then I sprayed a first layer of Russian green from the top, and then I mixed progressively more yellow and finally also some dead flesh into the Russian green to build up the highlights, and I always sprayed it from where the light would hit it. This was super easy and worked really well because, of course, this mini is kind of pear-shaped, so it lends itself extremely well to this technique. By the time I snapped this picture, I had also painted the armor pieces corn red, as you can see. I figured that would make for a nice, tidy, complementary color scheme. The King of Ruin is beautifully detailed, but that also means he's kind of cluttered and it was really important to be mindful of that and use a color scheme that would hold it all together. I took this picture before I started doing the washes. The antlers, straps, and greaves are all Mornfang brown. The chainmail is mechanica standard gray. The ropes and the guts are screaming skull. And the fingernails and all the bones he's decorated with are Zandri dust. I had also done some stippling and sponging to the armor at this point to give it sort of a rusty look, but I ended up doing more of that before and after the wash. The main color for this was squig orange, which turned out to work really well as a highlight. I also dry brushed some highlights on the three main armor pieces towards the top and generally tried to get the armor to match the lighting on the skin a bit. The base was basically airbrushed with various shades of gray for shadows and highlights. Then I painted the maggots and the skulls. And then I just slapped a wash of Agrax Earthshade all over everything, followed by some dry brushing. Nothing fancy, but most of it gets covered up by his big fat belly anyway. And here he is on my bench before the final top coat. The skin got a wash of Athonian camo shade thinned down with Lamian medium. The antler is Nuln Oil to max out the contrast, and basically everything else is Agrax Earthshade. I wanted to pick out some of the bigger boils, but I just glazed them because I didn't want to lose the shading that the airbrush had produced. I ended up making the glaze a bit too thick, though. For the wounds and the guts, I tried to do the same thing as on the Great Unclean one, where I painted them Screaming Skull first, and then washed them several times with Thin Down Mephiston Red and Carolberg Crimson, but it didn't work as well because of the shape of the guts. The guts were also the only thing on there that was annoying to paint because those two worm things are really hard to get to on the inside once you've glued the arm on, but I wanted to do the wash on all the guts at the same time to make sure they matched, so I glued it all together first. With hindsight, I'm still a bit torn about the way these guts look. It's reasonably realistic, but also not very interesting. And then again, if I had used more colors, I probably would have made the whole thing look cluttered. Anyway, once all those washes were done, I added some more dry brushing to the armor, painted the details of his mouth and the mouths of those four worms, and that was pretty much it. I matte coated the whole thing and then gloss coated all the gross stuff to make it, you know, extra gross. And that's all I have to say about this one. I had a tremendous amount of fun with this mini, and like I expected, it was actually all pretty easy because the detail is just razor sharp. The only problem I had was the thing with the guts I mentioned, and the ropes are kind of annoying, to be honest. Other than that, this is obviously my best paint job on a miniature yet, and I can't wait to get to the King of War. And you can bet your bottom dollar I'll be doing more creature caster in the future because these things are awesome. And now I'll shut up and let you guys check out the pictures. Like, comment, subscribe, Patreon, you know. See you guys next year.
shop. 